Hey, this is Nori from My Service Depot. Today we're going to talk about the latest updates to version 98 of Smart Service. To get started, we're going to take a look at iFleet. Some of the biggest updates we've made to version 98 have to do with what your field employees will see. So let's go ahead and hop over there. So the first feature we're going to start with is how to update a customer's email address in iFleet. Now, generally when your technicians are out there performing a service for the customers, well, they're going to be able to talk to the customers and see if there's any updates to their contact information. So in version 98 of Smart Service, we've added a new ability to collect that email. The first thing we need to do is head over to Smart Service and give the technicians permission to update customer emails for us. So what we need to do is enter the employee section of Smart Service. Once we're in the employee section, we need to pick out which technician we're working with today. I'll go ahead and say myself. You'll notice there has been some changes to the permissions window. So you'll have to go to the permissions tab. And from there, you have iFleet permissions on the right hand side. Inside of here, we can do things like allow our users to edit the email. All we have to do is keep this box checked. We'll have another feature we'll talk about secondly, allowing them to update the customer notes, or as you may know them, the private notes in iFleet so our technicians can correspond with us better about the customer's needs. So once we have that, we'll save our profile changes and then we'll head over to iFleet. So when looking at our job in iFleet now, we can open up our service and you'll notice that there have been two pencil icons added into iFleet. We have one near the contact information and another near the customer and job information. I'll go ahead and tap there and it'll bring up a box with the customer's email inside of it. From that box, we can tap to update our customer's email. Not only will that update it on this device, it'll send that email change back to the office and thus into QuickBooks for us for next time. The other ability that we've given our technicians is the ability to update customer notes. You may know these customer notes as our private notes, things about the customer that you know they're not gonna see, but we may need to share with our contacts in iFleet. So I can tap the pencil next to customer and job information. It'll show up with my private notes added by my office if I have any. If I'd like to add my own series of notes to this section, I'll tap add new notes in the bottom right hand corner and then tap anywhere in this gray square. Doing so will function as the normal public notes section does. It'll bring up our ability to timestamp our note and then we can write in whatever we would like. So if you've been using iFleet, you might have noticed that there's a default work order when you finalize the job, the thing that the customer signs that you might email to them at the end of the service. Well, that work order works for most companies. However, we've added a new feature now that'll let you replace the default work order that your customer would sign or get an email copy of at the end of your service. To do so, we need to head into Smart Service and change our settings. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is go into the Setup tab and from the Setup tab, we're going to go over to iFleet. In the iFleet section of the Setup tab, we need to check the Use Custom Work Order button. Now, this setting will only work for you if you've already gotten a custom work order either produced by My Service Depot or you've created your own using the fillable forms for iFleet. Once you have that, you check this box, and when we go to iFleet, I'll show you how to add your own custom work order. So now that we're back in iFleet, you want to tap the three horizontal lines in the top left or top right of your device. That'll open up a new window and towards the bottom you'll have a settings gear. You want to tap there. You'll be presented with a list of options. Now what we're looking for is the brand new option at the bottom that says custom work orders. If you've already uploaded your forms to your device, you're going to see all of your forms available here. You may check the gray check mark next to the form to select that as your standard work order. Once you've done so, you can tap the back button and then done. And from the next job you go on, you'll notice here that when I go to finalize this job at the bottom, instead of displaying the default terms and conditions screen, you'll now see the custom work order that you had added into iFleet. This circumvents the last screen, so I can collect a signature on this one if I would like and fill out any check boxes that apply. I'll hit done in the top right hand corner and iFleet will ask me if I'd like to select any attachments to send to my customer. I want to send our gold maintenance agreement to the customer instead of the standard. So I'll tap done there. 
and then I'll choose the email option. Then all we have to do is hit send on our email and the customer will receive our copy shortly. So now that we've finished our job and sent our copy off to the customer, we could go ahead and get started on the next job in our jobs to-do list. The first feature for smart service on our list is going to be the ability to see who posted jobs to QuickBooks. So we'll take a look at a situation where maybe I was reviewing some history records of jobs recently posted over and I noticed that one of the amounts in the jobs was wrong. We want to make sure that we correct the amount but I want to double check and make sure there wasn't a reason that we have a different amount on this job than usual. So we need to know who posted that over to QuickBooks. Let's find out. So I could go and visit my history record from the calendar, go through our job items, and notice maybe that's not exactly the usual price I would give this customer. Well, if I need to see if there was a special circumstance that's happened, I can look down here in the bottom right hand corner. You'll notice that there's a different name here now. So I can see that my associate Jamie had posted this job over to QuickBooks and now I know who to go to with any questions I have about the service. Next up is going to be the ability to search by email and smart service. So let's say you were checking the company inbox earlier and you notice one of your customers had requested service. However, the only way you have to identify them is their email address. In previous versions of smart service, you have to try to figure out what their name was or their address or a phone number, some kind of contact information other than the email. Well now, if that email is entered on their customer record, I can head right over to our contact search tab. From there, type in the email address I'm looking for. And there we go. I found a customer with promising results. Now if I open up their customer record, I can see the email address I was searching for was easily found. A great new feature added to the optional Smart Routes module is the ability to see your technician schedule in a map view. If you want to see where a technician is going to be headed today, we can now go into Smart Routes and take a look. So, now that we're on the scheduler, we can look at any of our technician's calendars. For example, let's take Cynthia's. By clicking on the green summary bar under her name, it brings up a list of our jobs. However, I also have the ability to click the mapping tab here to the right and view a map of what her workday looks like. From here, not only will I get a map view that I can zoom in on or drag around to see in a closer and what's going on, but I'll also see turn by turn directions of exactly where she's going to be driving to get to all of her stops today. <laughs> So if you've been certifying addresses in smart service since version 97, you may have noticed that the certification indicator, the little check mark next to the address, turns green when the certification is complete. Well, if you make a job though, you might have noticed the certification check mark wasn't green on the job, which means that somebody else might come by and try to certify the address that you've already certified. Well, in version 98 of smart service, we've made sure that the green uh, address certification check mark does default down to the job records. So. If I take a look at this customer here, and we go to certify their address, you notice our check mark turns green, as it does if I copy the address into the service address space. So both of our certifications are green now. That's good. But if I go to the jobs tab, and let's say we create a job for Amelia. you'll notice that the job record has now inherited the address certification check marks. So we can be sure that when we go to schedule this job, the address has been certified and anyone else looking at this record will already know the address has been taken care of for them. Another good feature added to improve your workflow would be the ability to check your proposals when viewing the customer record. As you may know in smart service, we have a customer record and a prospect record for every person. The customer record would be for your work orders and the prospect record would be for your quotes or proposals or whatever you'd like to call them. However, if you're on the phone with a customer, you don't always have a lot of extra time to check to see what proposals they have open, anything that they've accepted in the past, but you want to make sure you see that information just to make sure that no other sales rep or one of the technicians hasn't already done the estimate for them. So from any customer record now, inside of the Locations and Jobs tab, 
you'll notice that we have our regular buttons plus an additional feature here, the View Proposals option. So while I'm talking to this customer trying to schedule a service, I can quickly click this button and visit the prospect version to see that, hey, she's already got a new uh, installation for a blower motor planned as an estimate. So now I can access that estimate and I can convert that to a job and schedule the service. The next feature on our list was added for those of you using the service agreement module. Previously, if you guys have been using the mail merge features in the service agreements, maybe to notify your customers of a pending renewal or an expiration, well, you've probably been using that mail merge feature to get in contact with them. However, you may have noticed that the mail merge feature does not contain the customer's email address, expecting you to print out the letters and mail them. We've added in version 98 the ability to use the customer's email address to send out your mail merges that way instead. To do so, I'll enter the service agreement add-on. From here, I can choose my contracts, whichever ones I'd like to see or whichever ones I'd like to send to the merge. Of course, you can merge your contracts individually by clicking the Word document symbol on each one. However, you may choose to merge all of your contracts at once by using the Microsoft Word button at the bottom. So I can click there. Now, if you have a template already built up, you may have a My Templates folder here. You can go into that folder and select your template, whatever it may be. If you do not have a template built, you can hit the Cancel button in the bottom, which will open up a blank Word document, and you can create your own template and save it after for use next time. So I already have a template built. I'm going to go into that and select my template. So now that we're in Microsoft Word, if you had your template, you can upload it just as I said, or you can create your own. We'll fill out our information as normal using our insert merge fields whenever applicable. But you'll notice if you scroll down, you have the email field. That will let you add the customer's email. This will also be used when you press the finish and merge button, which will let you send out that email to all of your customers. So now that I have my template and it's loading in data from Smart Service and all the customers I'm trying to get a hold of, I can press the finish and merge and send these out as email messages. After you send out these email messages, you will notice that in each and every single one of these customers in their correspondence folder, you will still get a copy of the correspondence, the email that you sent out to them for referencing later on. So in this version of Smart Service, we've also added a safeguard for those of you using the correspondence features in Smart Service. You'll notice that if I go into a correspondence record, of course we can fill this out as normal, but when you're trying to save a correspondence record, that delete button is awful close to the save. And unfortunately, there may be some of you who have accidentally clicked that button trying to save your record and lost your data. Well, for that purpose, we've added a new feature. When you go to click the delete button, you now get a prompt to confirm whether or not you'd like to delete that phone call. So that'll give me an extra second to say, no, wait, I wanted to save that and make sure I get that save button. So another feature that we've added to this version of Smart Service is the ability to use the copy data tool to copy a map code. So some of you may be out there using map codes to get around your cities, or maybe just to categorize where things are in the city. Well, if I go to one of my jobs and let's say I type in a map code, well, that's great. Now, how do I get that map code to the customer? It used to be, of course, you'd use the copy data tool. However, the map code feature wasn't available within that utility. In version 98 of Smart Service, once you've added your map code, you can click the copy data utility, and you'll notice that map code is one of our options. So I can select the map code field, as well as any other fields I'd like to update. Hit the next button. Choose any other records I'd like to update. I'll choose this customer and one of her existing jobs. Press next. This will confirm with me that yes, I would like to move the map code from this job here to this customer in job record. Click complete. My data has been successfully moved. I can close out and to double check our work, I'll head back to the customer record. And it looks like our map code has been transferred for us. And that'll do it for the latest updates to version 98 of Smart Service. As always, if you'd like more information, go over to smartservice.com updates. Mm -hmm.